So these conditional if statements, this if, else if, and else statement, control the rotate variable based on the left and right arrow keys. So this will rotate our spaceship uh, to the right and to the left. And it's not actually moving the spaceship movie clip on the stage, it's just changing the variables. Now we can test this out like we could say trace rotate. And we could trace out the variable, so I'll just copy that and I'll paste it a few times here right after we change the variable, and then we could test it out just to see. Now you can see the variable up here in the upper left hand corner of the window here. I'll click on the screen and then hit the left arrow key and you can see there's the negative one. When I let go it's a zero. If I press the right arrow key it's a one. If I let go it's back to a zero. So you can see that so far our keyboard controls are just changing a rotate variable from one to zero to negative one to zero based on the right and left arrow keys. So this is great for rotating the spaceship, but what about thrusting? So we also need in asteroids the thrust. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this block of code right here, and I'm going to paste it here. And I want to get rid of these trace statements. I don't need those any longer, so I'm just going to get rid of these. All right, now, if key is down, key dot and we'll change that to up for the up arrow key and we'll say if key up then thrust equals 0.1 and then we'll say else copy that paste it else thrust equals zero. And not only does thrust equal 0.1, but also we want to take ship underscore mc and dot go to and let's say stop frame 2. So if we press thrust, we want to change our ship movie clip to our thrust keyframe, which we set up on frame 2. And if we're not pressing it, We'll just copy and paste that. We're going to move our ship back to frame one. And now for good measure, I'm also going to say right here, copy and paste. If we're not pressing this either, I'm also going to put that in there too. So I'll get rid of the spaces, the empty lines. And there we have an if, else if, an else statement, and then another if and else statement for our key up. And now, let's see here, at the bottom, there we go, this is our entire control function right now. If we hit control enter, once again we can click in the window and see that if we press the up arrow, you can see there's our thrust. If we let go of the up arrow key, there's no thrust. If we press the up arrow key, there's a thrust. So we actually have something being controlled here, and that is the go to and stop function on the thrust keyframe. Now, what is actually going to move our ship will be a move function. And I'm going to put this move function outside of this whole if block right here. This is one big giant if block right here. So outside of there, I'll call the move function down here. And I'm going to call a move function here, which we have not written yet, and which we will now need to write. So I'll go two lines down and say function move, open and close parentheses, open curly brace, and then a closed curly brace. So we set the rotate and thrust variables based on our keyboard key presses, basically the left right arrow and the up arrow. And then we actually move the ship with this move function. So we have the function now move and we just need to start writing the code inside of it. So we'll start off with an if statement and we'll say if rotate 
and then an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. Now if I do that and I say if just the variable name rotate, what I'm really saying is if rotate is true. So I could also say if not rotate, if it's not true. What I want to know is if rotate is set to 1 or negative 1, then let's actually rotate the spaceship. But if it's 0, we don't want to do anything. So there's a couple ways to do this. I could say if rotate equal equals 0, but what I really want to know is if it doesn't equal 0. So I could say if rotate does not equal 0, right? then we're going to do something, either negative 1 or 1. Or I could say if just if rotate. And if I do that, then I'm saying if rotate is true. Now a Boolean variable is either true or false. Also, you could say if it's false, it's equal to 0. But if it's equal to any other number, whether it's 1 or negative 1 or even point 0.1, let's say, then it would be equal to true. So I say if rotate, which is essentially if rotates true, meaning negative 1 or 1, then ship underscore mc dot underscore the rotation property that's built into Flash, ship underscore mc dot underscore rotation plus equal the rotate variable times 3. So our ship movie clip, its rotation property plus equal whatever the rotate variable is, which is either 1, so 1 times 3 will be 3, or negative 1, which would be negative 1 times 3, which would be negative 3. I'll put a semicolon at the end, and then we'll hit Control Enter, and we'll test it out. If I press the left arrow key, you can see that it rotates left, and now it rotates right. If I press the up arrow, I can see the thrust, and we're now beginning to move the ship. So if rotates true, meaning not zero, either one or negative one, then our ship, the rotation property, plus equal the rotate variable times three, which will be either negative three or three, depending on whether we've got the left or right arrows pressed. So now that we have the rotation working, we're going to do the same thing for the thrust. So we'll say if thrust and an open curly brace and then a closed curly brace. And this is going to be a little more interesting. What we're going to do is I'm going to paste in the code that we're going to need here. And the thrust, this is going to basically move the ship or position the ship on where to move based on the rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'll paste this in here. And this is relying on trigonometry. And I've created a little movie clip to explain how this is going to work. Now we've rotated the ship, but we need to know where to move it on its rotated axis. So I've got a little movie clip that I've made here called Trig, and we're basically going to be relying on some trigonometry to make this work. So here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis, and there's our ship. Now our ship is pointed right basically on this axis. And if we see the center of the ship as a circle, then the ship rotates. Notice how the ship's rotated. And this is the angle of the ship's rotation. And what we're going to need to know is, we're going to need to know the angle of the rotation, but in radians. So what we need to know is, where do we move the ship? Since it's rotated, we want to move it in this direction to this point right here. This is basically, if we look at this as a circle, this is where we want to move it to. And to do that, what we can do is we can draw, basically, on the circle a right triangle. And we want to discover point, this point right here on the x and y axis. So this would be x, and then this is y. And so if we look at it to solve that, we can use trigonometry, and we can solve the y with the sine and the radians combined with the radians to get the y point. And then for x, we can use the cosine with the angle, which is the radians essentially of the angle. And those are combined, we can get the x. So we can discover the x and y using trigonometry, using the sine and the cosine. Let's see how this plays out in ActionScript. So we'll go back to scene one, and we'll look at our code. 
and you can see in the code that this is how it's working.